God bless you, Facebook. Come on in, everybody. Happy Thursday to you. We are getting ready to get started tonight. We get ready to get started, and I'm happy to welcome you tonight. I'm happy to welcome you tonight. We're on a little early. Um, we're on just a little early tonight because we I, we have some other things that are happening tonight. So as soon as you come in, start sharing. Get this word out fast, guys, because we are on early tonight. Hey, Pastor Michelle, happy to see you. Tracy, happy to see you. Go ahead and start sharing for me as fast as you can so we can get this word out so people will know that we're on a, I did put a graphic up on Facebook um, to let people know that we were going to be a little early, but I don't know who all got it. So I need you guys to help me get the word out that we are on now. Okay, I see Beatrice. L'Oreal, I see you. God bless you. Mother Johnson, I see you. God bless you. Teresa, I see you. Hello. Sharon. Oh, is that the prophetess? My sister. Hey, my sister. How are you? Thank you for your prayers during my illness. I really appreciate that. I felt your prayers and I thank God for you for praying for me. God has delivered me. He has delivered me. Sandra, I see you. God bless you. LaDawn, thank you for sharing. Rochelle, I see you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mama Zola, God bless you. Nina, God bless you. Come on in, saints. Come in quickly and share right away because we need to get um, done. Um, tonight is a special night in our village. And so we're having something going on tonight in our in our church family. And so I had to come a little early. Uh, like I said, there were some graphics posted on um, social media. When you see these graphics go up, you got to help me spread the word. I'm only one person. And so, hey, Rhonda, good to see you. And so... Uh, since I'm only one person, you got to help me get the word out. All right, Kiki, welcome. Come on in. Share, sharing is evangelizing. Sharing is witnessing. All right, and so uh, let's do that. The numbers are looking good. We're going on up. Uh, thank you for for quickly coming in and quickly sharing. So, folks, to know we are on. And do I have a word from the Lord? Oh, yes, I do. And I'm so happy to share that with you tonight. Um, I got I got two things I want to deal with real quickly. And then we're going to jump into troubles and treasures. Troubles and treasures. All right? And so you call, you guys come on in. Hey, Kayla. Thank you for being here. I think I saw Wendy. Good to see you, darling. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Nina, good to see you. Brother Felix, good to see you. Elder Felix, good to see you. All right. I'm making sure that I try to get to as many as I can. Is that Joyce, Dr. Joyce Gilmer? God bless you. Love you. All right, we're praying for you, Beatrice. I just saw your, I saw your post. We're praying for you and praying for uh, a, a favorable result in Jesus' name. All right, folks, come on in. And um, I'm on, I, I am, um, I got a praise report and then I got a, I got a prayer request. Well, I, I, I'll give you my prayer request, my prayer request first. Uh, I just found out moments before I came on that one of my childhood friends has, uh, passed away, and, and it's kind of bothered me. Um, we grew up together in the, in, in the church. Um, I just preached for him and his wife for their ministry, um, probably about six. Rochelle, when do we go down to um, to uh, Pastor Hogan's church? Uh, hey, Lisa, good to see you. That's one of my some of my childhood friends. Um, Paul Hogan has passed away. Paul Hogan II. Um, I don't know, Rochelle, if you remember, we, we were down there not too long ago. Anyway, men, I just ministered for them. Um, uh, doing one of their church services, and um, that sad my heart, you know. But I know he's, I know he's where we're all longing to be with our Savior. But we want to pray for his wife and his children. All right, uh, Father, I just lift up my friend and I lift up his wife and and, and their family, their entire Hogan family. I just pray for comfort tonight and for peace, and and not for my friend only, but for every family that's suffering the loss and the pain of of, of a loved one going on. And so, Father, I just pray for strength and peace and comfort in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, my other friend is on here. God bless you, Tashana uh, Blackwell, uh, woman of God. Bless you. I honor you tonight. All right. Um, okay, let me move this down just a teddy tinge because y'all know I like all that head space. She has about right there. All right. Um, and then the other thing is, today I was a guest intercessor on the uh, prayer call. Rochelle, help me with 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 who I was with today. 
um, I, uh, uh, Pastor uh, 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 Walls, Pastor Kenneth Walls, uh, but his church and his prayer line. Um, I was with them today, and there are there were about five hundred and thirty some odd people on the call, which is a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing. And uh, but what I want to share with you real quick, right before I jump into the Word of God here, is that. Um, they called me, the pastor called me after the prayer call, maybe about 20 minutes after the prayer call was over. And he said that there was a woman on the prayer call, uh, who had just emailed the church and during the prayer, well, during the night before she had been experiencing some discomfort in her, in her abdomen area and, um, all right, dunamis. Thank you, L'Oreal, dunamis. And thank you, Rochelle. Um, and so they were, um, thank you, Shana. I love you. And uh, uh, Pastor Kenneth Walls, the third, yes. And so, um, anyways, uh, during a prayer call, uh, she said she experienced some some uh, burning in her chest and 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 some some severe discomfort in her abdomen area, her stomach. And the, she said, the "More I prayed, the more the more the prayer went on. She just got she just got ter terribly ill and sick. So eventually, she went to the bathroom, and where she uh, threw up, and out of her." Uh, out of her stomach came three tumors. She collected those two tumors uh, in, 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 a, in a towel, I guess, and uh, was headed to the emergency to have them looked at. But she said the pain left after she after she after she released this, whatever this was from her body. She she called it a tumor. I wouldn't. I can't. I didn't see what it was. But whatever it was, she uh, released it from her body and 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 received blessings, uh, Jamel, and received a um, uh, a healing. And, and, and that was, I, I just, I mean, you know, that just lifted my heart and uh, I began to praise God for his, his power to, to transcend from a, 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 a prayer call, just a telephone call. But what I said to the people on the telephone call, I'm going to say it to you right before I jump into this word. And that is that the, the Bible calls Satan the prince of the power of the air, prince of the power of the air. That's why it's so important that we stay on Facebook and we stay on these prayer calls and we continue to bombard the, bombard, bombard the airways. Because as we are called to uh, address principalities, and that's what Satan is, he's a prince of the air. He's a principality. We're called to address these principalities. And so as we address them through Facebook, through Instagram, through uh, YouTube, and through other, other, um, all right, I, I, I got you, Lisa, we, we're praying for them. And through other mediums that the Lord has given us over the airways, then we're able to, to, to like Paul said in Romans uh uh, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. We wrestle against uh, principalities, against powers, uh, uh, against rules of darkness, against spiritual weakness in high places. The high places is not talking about uh, offices and positions. It's talking about the heavenlies, which means we are addressed to heavenlies. And so tonight, right now, as we sit here on uh, the uh, quarantine cabin check-in, we address every principality, every power that's working around Facebook, working in Facebook and working through Facebook. And we declare and decree that the gospel of Jesus Christ will penetrate the Facebook realm and the Facebook world, the, just the social media world, and the gospel will reach out and there will be people saved and like today, healed by the power of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. I need five amens real quick in the Holy Ghost. Amen, 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 amen. I, I, I'll take five Five amens from one person or one from five. I need five amens as we come into agreement. Hallelujah. As we come into agreement, we're going to see mighty things happen. We're going to see mighty things happen. And so today, as I was preparing, uh, as I do each, each day to come uh, to you, um, uh, the Lord began to speak to me. I was I was in between naps, and and and, and I told y'all how my sleep pattern is right now, and uh, I'm not complaining about it because I'm getting a lot done, and God is keeping me. You know, maybe you get eight hours straight, or or, or you get eight hours every other hour. I mean, as long as you get your eight hours in, uh, praise God for that. And so I I, I, I haven't been getting eight in yet, but we're getting close. We're getting closer and closer to, to those eight hours. Um, but anyway, I was between uh, resting because I. Up at three and down at six and up at nine and whatever uh, the case may be. And I was, as I was getting, I heard the Lord said to, in, into my heart. He said, "I want you to talk to the people on the uh, quarantine cabin check-in tonight about uh, the treasure that is hidden in the trouble." He said, "Talk to them about the treasure that is hidden in the trouble." 
And I, and I want you to declare that right now in your comment box. I want you to declare that there is a treasure hidden in my trouble. Come on, say it with me. There is a treasure hidden in my trouble. And uh, I want you to know that God is going to, by his power, and by his by His spirit, he's speaking, I'm, I'm writing, right, as God speaks, I'm writing things down. Amen. And so it, it, it is very important that, that, that we not allow the enemy to, to have us so focused on the negative that we don't see the positive that exists. Uh, every situation that we go through, the Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. And so even in your worst day, even in your worst circumstance, excuse me. Okay, well, it went away. Even in your worst day, uh, in, in your worst circumstances, there is something to be found in that that is going to bring you a blessing. How many believe that God can bring something good out of something bad? How many of y'all believe that God can turn your circumstances uh, into a situation, your circumstances into success. How many believe that God can turn your circumstances into success? I want you to write that in your comment box. God can turn my circumstances, my negative circumstances, my, 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 my uncomfortable circumstances into success. God is able to take your circumstances and turn your circumstances into success. You've got to know who you are. And let me tell you, there's a powerful revelation coming out of what God is doing during this time of the COVID-19 virus, during this time of the pandemic. There is something amazing that is going to uh, manifest itself in just a few days. Somebody say just a few days. We don't have long. It seems like a long time because we're, we're quarantined and because our, our, our regular schedule has been interrupted. It seems like a long time because things are not normal like they used to be, but it's only been a few days and, and in just a few more days, God is going to cause the manifestation of the good thing to come forth. I'm prophesying to somebody right now. I'm speaking over somebody's circumstances Right now, I'm telling you that your circumstances are going to lead you to a success, that God has a plan that's larger, bigger, stronger, powerful, and more overwhelming than the enemy's plan. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give in. You don't have to worry and be concerned. You don't have to stress during this time. My God, God is on your side, and something good is about to happen on your behalf. I wish I had me an amen church in here somewhere. I feel the momentum of this. I feel God picking up momentum even in my spirit. We are getting closer to the breakthrough because there is always a treasure in the trouble. I said there was always treasure hidden in the trouble. The book of of Job chapter number 14. As scribes, my scribes, that's our first scripture. Job chapter 14 and verse 1. Job chapter 14 and verse 1. It says these words, a man that is born of a woman. Now, let me just qualify that right now. That's all of us. If you got here uh, uh, another way, then you're a strange being. If you got here another way, then my brother and my sister, you're not human. But if you are a human being, you came in this earth through a woman. Even when Jesus got ready to come here, he didn't just show up. He didn't just uh, 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 translate himself uh, or beam himself down from heaven. He came through a woman and she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And so Jesus came here through a woman, and so do you and I. So Job says, a man that is born of a woman, anybody that got here through a woman, anybody got a mama, you're going to have trouble. You got a mama, you're going to have trouble. He said, they're born, a man that is born of a woman are a few days, and those days are filled with trouble. And so we're only here for a little while. You know, whether we live to be uh, a 50 or, or 100, it's still not a long time. You, you, you blink and life is like, like, like a vapor, uh, the writer says. Uh, it's here one minute and it's gone the very next minute. And so even though that we are, 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 are in a world that's filled with turmoil, that's filled with strife, it's always something going on in somebody's life. There's never peace everywhere because where there's peace in one place, there's a calamity in another. And so he said, anybody who's born of a woman has a few days to be here. And those days are going to have trouble in them. 
Then Job asked a question later in that uh, text. He says, if a man dies, shall he live again? Jesus said, yeah, because I'm the resurrection and the life. And so we know there's a life after this life, but this life has trouble. Even Jesus says to us in the book of St. John, uh, chapter number 16, St. John, chapter number 16, Jesus says to us that, that, that in this world, you're going to have trouble. I, I, I don't want you to get, uh, 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 I don't want you to mistake it. I, 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 I don't want you to, um, to, uh, to uh, get confused by it. I, 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 I don't want you to, 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 to act like, you know, you ain't supposed to have some trouble. In this world, you are going to have trouble. St. John 16 and 33. St. John 16 and 33. In this world, he says, you are going to have trouble. But then he says, be of good cheer or be encouraged because I have overcome the world. So the same place in which you have been trouble, I have overcome. And if Jesus is an overcomer, I am too. I need five of y'all to type that right now, that if Jesus is an overcomer, I am too. How can you say that, Pastor? How can you say that I'm an overcomer because Jesus is? Because the Bible says we are heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus Christ, which means what comes to him also comes to us. And Jesus himself said, don't worry about, don't marvel over the works that I do. For the works that I do, you shall do these works, and then even greater works shall you do. Why? Because I go to my Father. And when I go to my Father, He's going to send you a comforter, a paraclete, a helper, one to walk beside you. And this empowering spirit, which is called the Holy Ghost, is going to be in you, working through you, reminding you of what I taught you and empowering you. That's why he said in Acts 1 and 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost have come upon you and you shall be a witness unto me in Samaria, Judea, Jerusalem, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. The power of the Holy Spirit in us can work miracles, signs, and wonders. You don't have to worry because in this world, you're going to have trouble. But you don't have to fear the trouble because Jesus has already overcome the world. Somebody clap your hands and give God praise. I'm preaching hard on this thing. Hallelujah. The, and then uh, the, 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 the Apostle Paul. Uh, tells us in Ephesians uh, chapter number six, uh, uh, he says, now, because you're in this war and because you're going to have trouble, you got to put on the whole armor of God. Dress yourself in the armor of God so that you won't um, uh, 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 be, be taken away by the wiles of the devil. And then the apostle Peter tells us in first Peter chapter four, verse 12, he says, beloved, Think it not strange. I know I'm going fast. I'm sorry, my scribes, I'm going, I, I'm going fast tonight. Let me slow down and let the scribes. I don't want to get ahead of the scribes. First Peter 4.12. Now, I've thrown a lot of scriptures out there. And so you guys are going to have to, I, I've been preaching scripture after scripture after scripture for the last two minutes. And so I need, so I need you to, to, to look these scriptures up. When you, when we, you come back and watch the replay and, and dig and find it, you'll find many, many scriptures that I've been saying. But I want you to thank, Nicole's, thank you for, that's why I, Thank you, Nicole. Keep up with me. Keep up with me, y'all. Keep up with me. First Peter 4, 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try your faith, as though some strange thing has happened to you. Now, Peter says this because he knows you read Job 14. He knows you read John uh, 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 16, 33. Come on. He knows you read Ephesians uh, 6, 12. So, he, so, so Peter said, now, don't act like something strange happened to you. Trouble is in the world and trouble is coming to your house. I said trouble is in the world. It has a schedule and it's coming to your house. But in the trouble, there is treasure. I feel like God stretching out in me. I can feel God stretching out in me. He says, but rejoice in so much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, that you may also that you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So in other words, if you suffer with him, come on somebody, talk back to me. You all shall, shall reign with him. And that's something we really got to get to our to the next generation. That there, there is a price to be paid to walk with him. 
But any man, no man, after Peter had asked Christ, he says, uh, you know, well, what are we going to do? You know, we lost everything. We gave up everything because Jesus had taught the, the, the uh, 5,000. And as he taught them, they began to leave. And it began to walk away. And, and, and of course, you've got a lot of, lot of fish and low people. People who are only going to come around for, 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 for the blessing. They only, they're only going to come around for, the, for what you're passing out. But, but, but once you put down the word and show them the requirement to live a kingdom life, then they, they, they leave. And so Jesus asked the 12 that was left, which was his disciples. He says, are you going to leave too? Peter said, where shall we go? You got the words of eternal life. We have left all to follow you. And Jesus said, well, let me help you with something. No man, having left mother, father, houses, land, sister, brother, that I did not give him a hundredfold in this life and the life to come. Somebody help me preach that tonight. In this life, I'm going to get my hundredfold. In this life, I'm getting my blessing. In this life, I'm getting my breakthrough. In this life, I'm going to enjoy the blessings of God. And also in the life to come, I'm getting double for my trouble. I wish I had me a church here tonight. I'm getting double for my trouble. Whatever I lost in this world, whatever I gave up in this world, he's going to give that back to me in this life and the life to come. Somebody shout in here, double for my trouble. Come on, declare that in your comment box. I'm getting double for my trouble. I'm getting double for what I've been through. The enemy has tried to make me feel like my trouble is going to take me out of here, but you're not going to leave here until God is finished blessing you. There's a blessing with your name on it. Come on, praise him with me tonight. I feel praise in my spirit hallelujah hallelujah and so 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 what we have to remember beloved is that when we go through and we're tested and we're tried it's it's normal trouble is normal we don't like it but it's normal trouble is a part of the process we don't want to hear that but it's still true and because trouble is normal the Apostle Paul, Peter rather, says, don't act strange. Don't act, don't act like you uh, think it ain't supposed to come to your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I want to show you one more scripture before I, before I move on to my conclusion. And this, is, this is from the Apostle Paul. I'm sorry. Uh, this is not the Apostle Paul. This, this is the... Uh, uh, this is James, from the book of James. And, the, and, and that's really not the one I want, but I'm going to use it anyway. James 1, 3, and 4 says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. But, when patient hath, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Okay, I'm, I'm going to slow now. Knowing this, are y'all listening to me tonight? That the trying of your faith, this trouble you're dealing with, is producing something. My trouble is producing something. It hurts, but it pays. Hallelujah. It's difficult, but it has dividends. Thank you, Jesus. He said, knowing that the trying of your faith works with patience, but let patience have her perfect work. That she may be perfect, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. In other words, this situation is bringing maturity in you. And it's bringing the kind of maturity that proves to you and God you can handle the blessing. I'm going to let that be a sila moment. It is proving to you and to God that your maturity has reached a point you can handle Lacking nothing. How many ready to step into that place? I know I am. I know I am. This is the one I was trying to get to. And it is in the book of Peter. Peter 1, 7. Peter 1 and 7. Come on, come on. Don't forget. Behind every trouble. Or hidden, rather, hidden in every trouble. Hidden in every trouble is a treasure. Hidden in trouble. Tru treasures are hidden in trouble. Peter says in verse number seven, first Peter chapter one, verse seven, the well, actually, let's let's look at um 
Let's look at verse 6 before we get down to 7. Wherein ye rejoice greatly. Now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Oh, that word temptation is not talking about, you know, tempted to eat some chocolate when you're, when you're on a diet. It's not talking about tempted to call your ex-boyfriend and, and have a rendezvous you shouldn't have. He said the, the, the temptations here are the trying of your faith. Peter says that rejoice, greatly rejoice. Even though for a season you're in heaviness, even for a season you look sad, even for a season some things ain't going right, ain't quite coming together like you know, like you want them to or, the, or like they should. He says, I want you to rejoice anyway. Why? Because the trial of your faith is more precious than gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire might be found into praise and honor and the glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ. Your, your faith, the trying of your faith, is worth more than your 401k, worth more than, worth more than any other retirement plan you may have. It's worth more than any investment you made, that nice car you have outside, that nice house you're living in, those vacations you go on. He said the trying of your faith is worth more than all that stuff because it's producing something in you that those things cannot Touch your neighbor and say, go through. Because what you're going to is greater than what you're going through. Come on, tell somebody on here. What you're going to is greater than what you're going through. So go through, my brother. Go through, my sister. In every circumstance and in every situation, there is something in it that will bless you that will lift you, that will empower you. You're not going through for nothing. You're not in this heat for nothing. You're not in this trial for nothing. Something big is about to happen for you. If you just came in, you haven't shared yet, share the video, push that share button. Sharing is evangelizing. Sharing is witnessing. Sharing is carrying the word of God throughout Facebook land. Don't just eat this yourself. Remember those, 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 those lepers who were sick outside of Samaria in the Old Testament. And the Bible says that the Lord let them find, um, not Samaria, the Lord, uh, Syria. The Lord let them find food in the Syrian camp. And they ate and ate and ate and ate. And they said, you know what? We better tell somebody because if we don't share this, uh, something bad going to happen to us. And they shared the word of the Lord, shared, shared, shared the blessing of the Lord with the whole town. So share this with the whole Facebook town. Don't just eat this and be happy. If it's blessing you, it'll bless your sister. It'll bless your neighbor. It'll bless your coworker. It'll bless your friend. Go ahead and share this video right now with somebody you know. Share, share, and share. In every situation, there is some tools you can gain. In every circumstance you go through, there was something you can learn that will position you in a better place than you were when you went in. When you come out of trials, you don't come out of trials empty. When you come out of tests, you don't come out of tests empty. You come out with your hands full. Who am I prophesying to? When Israel spent all those years, the Israelites spent all those years in Egyptian captivity, the night they came out, the night of their exodus, the Bible says they left with the wealth of Egypt. They didn't just leave. Well, thank you for the for, thank you for the freedom. Thank you, thank you, Master. We leaving now. No, 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 no. That's not how we come out. We don't come out with our hands up. And I'm not, I'm not against that song. I know it's a great song. I'm coming out with, with my no, no. I'm not coming out with my hands up. I'm coming out with my hands full. I need five of y'all to type that in your box right now. I'm coming out with my hands full, with my arms full, not just coming out. Not just being free. I'm not going to go through all of this and just walk away. Oh, no, 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 no. Not going to happen. I will have something to show for my trouble. Something to show for my weariness. Something to show for what I've been through. Come on, after all I've been through, God's going to be blessed my life. He's going to bless my life. I'm not leaving empty. Come on, church. So, 
Our next scripture, and I'm getting ready to bring it in because I only got, I got about uh, 12 minutes, y'all. I got about 12 minutes. Y'all got to come on in here. Share, share, share. We, we got to wrap it up a little early tonight, but I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. God has moved by his spirit. He has spoken to us in an amazing way. We can, if we, if we close this alive right now, we have heard from God. We have felt his spirit and we have learned so much in a short time. Hallelujah. My treasure is hidden in my trouble. I said again, my treasure is hidden in my trouble. If I don't go through, I can't get to. If I don't go through it, I can't get to it. And so Paul says to us in the, uh, the book of 2 Corinthians, in the book of, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my I'm gonna get my paper Bible out for that. I'm gonna, at least once a night, we got to hear these pages. Y'all know I love the pages. At least once each quarantine, we got all this, all this, all this electronic, all, all these electronics around us. But every now and then, we gotta. Yeah, I did it on purpose. I want you to fall in love with that sound. I'm, I, I'm doing that so you can follow with that sound. I'm, in, I'm encouraging all my quarantine cabin members, my, 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 my quarantine cabin partners, go get you a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, go get you a handheld Bible with some letters in it. Keep your phones, keep your iPads, keep all your notebooks. That's fine. And use them. But, but when you get a chance, go to the order you a Bible. Every now and then you want to hear that. And I got a warning for you at the end of this video. I want you to listen up. Well, maybe not tonight. I'll take that back. I'll share that tomorrow. Not tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Watch this church. I'm, I'm going to read verse 8. And then later I'm going to go back to the verse 7. Because I want to I, I read it in a reverse order. To make a point. Verse 8 said, We are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Verse 10. Always abounding, I'm sorry, always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We're troubled on every side, but we got a treasure. We are perplexed, but we got a treasure. We are persecuted, but we got a treasure. We are cast down, but we got a treasure. I, I want you to shout right now, but I got a treasure. But I got a treasure. Shandele <laughs> Bokoshia. But I got a treasure. It hurts, but I got a treasure. It's costing me to walk with God, but I got a treasure. Lost some friends, but I got a treasure. Talked about, but I got a treasure. My God, suffered a little here and suffered a little there, but I got a treasure. I have this treasure in earthen vessels. And God put it in an earthen vessel so he could get the glory. Because I know it's not me. It's not by power and it's not by might, but it's by the spirit of the living God. I got a treasure and it's from the Lord. Hallelujah. I got a treasure and it's from the Lord. This treasure keeps me moving when trouble's all around me. This treasure keeps me holding on when I really want to give up. This treasure pushes me when I want to stand still. I got a treasure and it's from the Lord. All the trouble I've been through, it doesn't matter because the treasure pays for it all. Jesus said in, in the time he was here, he was giving the, the, uh, 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 the um, disciples a, a parable. And, and, and God, my, my scribes find this, is when he said um, uh, the woman who is in travail, he was talking about a woman having a baby. And he was explaining to them that even though it's a painful process, it's a painful process, but when that woman is delivered uh, of, that, of that man child, that she she doesn't remember the pain. I, I'm looking for it too, guys.
it's 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 uh Saint John 16 and 21. Saint John 16 and 21. Let me just read that real quick. I, I know my time is going, but let me read it real quick. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, and he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more? And then after a little while you will see me. Verily I say unto you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn into joy. I wish I had me a church in here. You're going to cry. And the world, when they kill me, he was saying, when they crucify me, they're going to rejoice and you're going to weep. He said, but your weeping will soon be turned into joy. Because on the third day morning, I'm getting up. Can I prophesy over these airways tonight that even though you're weeping right now, even though you're having some trouble right now, God said your trouble is going to return into joy. And it reminds me of what of the prophet said in the Old Testament. The prophet Isaiah, when he said, listen, he's going to give you beauty for ashes. For your mourning, he'll give you all of gladness. And for your heaviness, he'll give you the garment of praise. Today is a day of exchange. Bring your sorrows. Bring your burdens. As Peter said, cast all your care on him. In exchange for your weeping, God going to give you joy. Do I have anybody on this live tonight that's ready to exchange your weeping for joy? Ah, Jesus said, the world going to rejoice. You're going to weep, but soon it's going to change. Your grief will be turned into joy. Then he goes on to the parable I was talking about when he says, a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because, the, her, because of, 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 of the joy the child brings to her life. When the baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. My God. What I'm saying to you tonight is that you're having trouble, but your trouble is birthed in a treasure. Your trouble is at full term with your, with your treasure. And once your treasure comes, it's going to be so great. It's going to be so anointed, so powerful that you will forget. Somebody clap your hands right now and declare, I will forget. I'm going to forget this. I'm going to forget this. Come on, God. Send that blessing to make me forget. Send that breakthrough that makes me forget. Send the anointing that makes me forget. Because one day soon, I will remember this no more. Had some hard times, but I got a treasure. Hallelujah. Had some hard times, but I got a treasure in my spirit. And one day soon, I will forget. One day soon, I'll forget about these tears. and Forget about this crying. I will forget it's going to happen. God's going to bless you. With such a blessing, you will forget. Talk to me, church. I said, talk to me, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I will soon forget. Thank you, Jesus. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. That thing says that the power may be of God and not of us. Our last, our last example, and we're getting off of here, but our last example is an example found in the book of Chronicles. The book of Chronicles. In it's second Chronicles. I want you to turn there real quickly if you if you if you follow me in your Bible. Second Chronicles. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Chapter number 20. Second Chronicles, chapter number 20. Oh, church. Oh, my God. When you have Second Chronicles, if you're turning, if you, when you have it, please say, please signify by type of name, man, here. Because I, 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 I'm getting ready to close with this. I'm getting ready to close with this. Getting ready to close with this. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let me just set the, let me set the pace. Let me, let me let me let me set the back not the pace. Let me set the backdrop for here because I don't have time to read this. I only, I only have a few more minutes before I got to get off of here. 
I want to set a backdrop for this, okay? And Jehoshaphat is a king, and um, he's a good king. He's a righteous king. One of, he's one, one, one of the good kings. And he obeyed the Lord and, and pretty much did what God would have him to do. Um, this is a time where the, where the kingdoms have been divided. And so uh, Joseph had, just Jehoshaphat, the king of... Uh, one second, folks. I, I, want, I want to get this to you. And my screen just did something. Hold on one second. Hallelujah. That's why, I, see? That's why this paper Bible is the best. Let's turn to the paper Bible. It ain't going to go away. The screen ain't going to change. It ain't nothing going to happen. Can I get an amen on that? I said, can I get an amen on that? Thank you, Heavenly Father. Turn, uh, let me get there and hear y'all. Tarabashan de Biosha. Second Chronicles twenty and twenty. Now, now. Just like this story going to end good, I want to prophesy and tell you your story going to end good. Do me a favor. Tell five people on here your story is going to end good. Now you say, how do, how do I talk to people on here? You put their name in the comment box, at Lisa or at Nicole or at Mother Johnson. Touch five people and tell them your story going to end in victory. I said your story going to end. Ooh, come on, church. Your story is going to end in victory. Hallelujah. This, this righteous king, Jehoshaphat, is faced with an unexpected battle. Uh, the, uh, there are kings around him who have gotten together and decided that they were going to attack. And at this time, Jehoshaphat did not have the kind of army that could withstand uh, that kind of threat, or, 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 or certainly not the, the actual act of war. He wasn't ready for war. And so getting this letter from the king that they were coming after him, uh, it made him very nervous and, and very afraid. The Bible was real clear that, that Jehoshaphat got scared. And he went before God and said, God, you hear the threats. You hear the threats. I can't handle these people. I don't have the army to handle. The kingdom is divided. I don't have the army to handle them. I need you to help me. The Bible said that the spirit of the Lord fell upon a servant. Didn't even tell him what the servant's name was. And this servant began to prophesy. And that's where you pick up the story uh, this servant is prophesying to Jehoshaphat and to all of the people. Hallelujah. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Here me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. Believe the Lord your God, that, 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 that is Isaiah, I mean, that is uh, uh, Second Chronicles 20 and 20. Well, I gotta skip along here because my time is gone. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really. It's five thirty. I should be off at five thirty. It's five thirty now, so I gotta push this fast forward button and finish this story. They got up the next morning. The word of the Lord came to the to, to the servant and said, "Don't take a spear, don't take an arrow, don't take a bow. All I want you to do is go down there and praise me and said, for the Lord is good, His mercy endures forever. All you gotta do, get the choir out, send Judah first. The Lord." Is good. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is good. His mercy endures. I don't know if they did it to sanctify Pentecostal way or they had slow worship. The Lord is good. And His mercy. I don't know which way they sang the song. But whatever way they sang the song, the Bible says that the enemy devoured each other. The three armies that came against him all devoured each other. 
Now, I got I got I got to plug this in cuz this is this is important. This is the important part of the story. If I don't tell you this part, it won't make sense. In this time, whenever kings would declare war on another king, you could not declare war with unless you bought what they call a bounty. You had to bring something to the war, some jewels, some 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 commodity, some kind of trade had to happen. You couldn't come to the war empty-handed. Which is why I tell our, our saints at Kingdom Life, don't fight nobody broke. You don't fight broke people. If they can't bring something to the war, you don't fight them. What's you going to win? What are you going to gain from this fight, this argument? What you, what you going to lead with? If you can't count it, what you going to lead with? If you can't monetize it, if it can't make you a better person, if it can't make you stronger, you don't fight people who have nothing to offer. So imagine three kings get together, they have to get their bounty. That's okay. What you bringing? Well, we're going to bring gold. What y'all going to bring? We're going to bring silver. What y'all going to bring? We're going to bring some, some precious oils. And, 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 and I, I'm painting a picture here for you. I'm painting a picture here for you. And so, so he says, okay, all right. So, so we, we got our bounty. And so now whoever won the war will take all the goods with them. That's how it went. You bought, you bought your bounty, you put it on the table. Like y'all, some, some of y'all poker players, you know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all card players out there. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> you put it all in the middle. Whoever has the best hand, they win. And so now, when these kings come against the house effect, I'm closing. I promise you I'm closing. I'm closing, Rochelle. I'm closing. Get off my heels. I'm closing. You probably going in the way to take care of the other business. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So I have two, at least two scribes here tonight. When they, when they devoured each other, the Bible says that Jehoshaphat and the people went in and collected the spoils they had brought. That was a payday they weren't even looking for. Are you hearing me tonight? When the war was over, they had lifted a finger because the prophet who God spoke to said, this battle is not yours. This battle is not yours. This battle is not yours. It's a battle for God's glory. It's a battle for God's power. It's a battle for God to show himself strong and show himself mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My wife's on my heels. I see you, baby. I'm coming. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it in. I'm bringing it in. I'm bringing it in. I promise you I am. It took them three days, the Bible says, three days to collect the spoils from that war they didn't start. They got rich from a fight they didn't start. They got wealthy from a fight they did not start. They got increased from a fight they did not start. What I'm telling you right now is the enemy messed with the wrong person when he messed with you. Should have never hit your house. He should have never hit me with COVID-19. He should have never hit me with COVID-19. He should have never hit me with COVID-19. Because he started to fight, but I'm getting the spoils. You start to fight, but I'm getting the riches. I'm going to win without lifting a finger. In Jehoshaphat's story, and I'm closed, he found his treasure beyond his trouble. And I'm here to tell you, you too will find your treasure beyond your trouble. I've been I, I've been challenging you, you guys here uh, uh, at least every other night with with, with a seed of it. I, I, and I've been I've been I only challenge me when God tell me to challenge you. I don't I don't receive offerings every night on Facebook, but when God tell me to do something, I obey Him. You don't have to if you don't have it, He ain't talking to you. If you don't have this, God is not talking to you. Well, there are several people on here tonight. The Lord has challenged you with a twenty dollar, twenty cent offering. Twenty twenty. That's the year. The word for this year is. You're going you're gonna to win without lifting a finger. Believe his prophet and you'll prosper. Now, I'm not going to beg or embarrass God by, by, by digging and digging. You know you have $20.20? Go to the cash app. The cash app. And, and we had trouble with our, with our church cash app. And many of you have been sowing and, and, and the seeds won't come through. And so if, you have, if you've already given and they rejected it, we, we we're trying to work that out with cash app. But you can cash app Alvernis, A-L-V-E-R-N-I-S. Somebody help me put that up there. Dollar sign, my first name. $20.20. And I guarantee you, if I be a man of God, that seed is going to cause you to come into a season of sweatless victories. A season where the enemy has to pay you 
God says you prophesy, you speak the word, you declare the word, and they will prosper. I want you to know tonight you're going to prosper. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Jasmine. So go ahead, sow that seed tonight. I got to get off of here, guys, because I'm four minutes over my time, and I don't want to get in trouble, which I'm already, I'm already in some trouble. So I want you to go ahead, go to the cash app, sow that seed tonight. Sow it in faith. Don't sow it in fear. You're not gambling. You're not rolling dice. You ain't hoping something good happen. You are trusting the word of the prophet. You've been with me for many nights here in, in, in the quarantine cabin. I don't play with God and I don't play with his people. If God don't say it, I don't say it. But every time he says it, I am committed to opening my mouth and saying it. There was a woman who on, on here a couple nights ago obeyed the word of the Lord as I was speaking. She gave a $7 seed offering. Listen, a, it was $7. God don't always ask for 20 and 30. Sometimes it's simple. $7. She obeyed God and sowed that seed the next day. A friend called her and said, you was on my heart. God put you on my heart. And the Lord said for me to pay your rent for this month. Now, $20.20 ain't going to break you. But it can make you. Did you hear what I said? $20.20 won't break you, but it absolutely can make you. Obey the word of the Lord tonight. Hear the prophet tonight. Sow that seed of $20.20 and watch God do a miracle in your life. Everything you do here, every time you sow here, whenever I ask you to sow, you can trust it's going to good ground. And we are doing the work of the Lord. Keep watching us. You'll see in just a few days, you'll be able to see, wow, my seed helped do that. My seed brought that to pass. I planted into that. I sowed into that. Because one day we won't be only on Facebook. One day we're going to touch the world right here from Saginaw. And I want you to be a partner in that. Father, I thank you right now and I praise you. I praise you for the boldness you've given me to obey you. There was a time I couldn't even do this because I didn't want to be uh, labeled and, and have a stigma. But today you give me boldness to obey you. I pray every person who moves in obedience tonight or moves by faith tonight and sows that seed that they will experience instant miracles. Just like you gave Jehoshaphat the victory, give them the victory around them and let them be the one who takes the bounty home. And let them find their treasure in their trouble. In Jesus' wonderful and magnificent name, amen. Amen and good night. I love you all with the love of the Lord and with my love. God bless you.